the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Riley and Natalie on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. Let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then, with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father, to Christ our Lord, for this couple, his servants, that lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness uphold what you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. 
be he rich or poor, his heart is content, and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband, her, thoughts, her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Family, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus says to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. Thus, this is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear Riley and Natalie, dear families and friends, so the final countdown has come to an end. We are here, the long awaited wedding day is here and believe me, we all rejoice with you. I know how excited you are and how you have been preparing yourselves for this great day. It has been a blessing, blessing personally to accompany you during this past year in your immediate preparation for your wedding. It has been fun. It has been a great opportunity to get to know each other during our conversations, our meetings, learning from each other. And at the same time, you have taught me so much with your intentional desire to place Christ, your faith in him at the very center of your relationship, at the very heart of your relationship. And today, as you receive the sacrament of holy matrimony, Christ wants to be even more present and shining in your lives. He wants to be very involved in your lives and he wants to come and encounter you and, and have communion with him. If we really think about it, Christ always blesses our generosity. When we think that we're giving him something, he's gonna give us even more. He never gets tired of giving us. And our deepest desire in our lives is to be in communion with him. In my personal experience, I think there are three main ways in which we can all listen to God in our day-to-day -day activities, in our day-to-day -day lives. First is through our personal prayer. 
Second, through the different circumstances that we experience in our life from our beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sunset that speaks so much about God and his closeness and his care for us. And as well, through people, the different encounters that we find through our whole lives. The people that God places in our path are not coincidences. Yes, even at the volleyball court in Kansas City, Missouri, of all places. Our Lord places before us the people that we need to encounter for a reason, because they have a message from God. And the message could be the very person that you will spend the rest of your life with. Our Lord has a great sense of humor. We just have to really put on those spiritual glasses of our faith in order to be able to see him and discover him at every single moment of our life. Christ comes to encounter each one of us. He comes to our encounter, and he knows what we need at every single moment of our lives. And Holy Scripture reminds us that it is not good for man to be alone. It's just not good. We were meant, we were created for community, for communion with others, to give ourselves to the other, to love, in summary. Blessed the husband of a good wife. Blessed the husband of a good wife. We read in our first reading of the book of Sirach. Because a worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Those are very powerful and beautiful words that we just read. And both of you, Riley and Natalie, know how to bring joy to each other. Riley, with having that good heart, the heart of a servant leader that seeks with determination the good of all around you. And I'm sure that you will continue with that determination, loving Natalie every day. And Natalie, I know that you bring joy not only to Riley, but to all of us by embracing all the many gifts and talents that you have received, but with simplicity and humility in order to serve. And that's such a blessing for all of us. And that's something that we need in today's world. So thank you so much for bringing us, both of you, that joy. And from now on, you'll be companions for life, for life. And to have a companion for the adventure of life, for the vocation and mission that our Lord himself wants to give you. Because again, it is not good for man to be alone. We need companions. And what a gift, what a blessing it is when we find a companion for life. We need someone to share our joys with and our sorrows, our victories and our failures. Having the comfort that there is always someone there to listen to us. And we know that that companion for life is first and foremost our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of your marriage. He's the one that has brought you together here to live in communion with himself and with each other. And that's why marriage is such a sacred bond. What God has joined together, no human being must separate. Marriage and family life, I think we all know it, is not something new, but nowadays are under attack in a very serious way in our world. And that's why we need more than ever, holy couples. Holy husbands and wives that are not afraid of placing Christ at the very center of their family life, making of the rosary their family prayer, because at the end of the day, that's how we're gonna crush the head of Satan that wants to destroy family life and its virtues, its true values. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female and joined them together this is God's plan. It's not ours. It's God's plan. And that's why it's so important to always go back and remember the beginning. That freshness, not only of your relationship, but of your own identity as a son and daughter of God, created in his own image and likeness. This is so powerful. Something that will perhaps help you to keep your love fresh in your married life will be to remember this day. 
your wedding day and the day when you realize why you wanted to get married. Go back to the beginning, to that beginning, to that first love as often as you need and be sure that our Lord will bless you abundantly. But as well, we know that the journey, the journey that you're starting right now might get scary at times. But that's why after you receive our Lord in the Eucharist today, you will, you will have the awesome opportunity to consecrate your marriage to our Blessed Mother. She got your back, always. She's watching over you together with St. Joseph, the perfect couple. That's why Father Stephen and I were wearing these beautiful chasubles with the images of our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph. In order to remind you of that, that you are supposed to become like this, a holy family, a holy couple. And you have those role models in front of you. But at the same time, you've, you had a living replica of Mary and Joseph, both of you, in your own parents, present here. Stay close to them. Stay always very close to them. Ask them questions. They're the, the experienced ones, right? And pray for them daily. So I want to thank you to your parents for teaching your children how to place Christ at the center, how to place their faith first. That's what matters. Obviously, it's not easy to see your children leave home, right? But sacrifice is part of love, right? You have experienced that. And you know that when we die to ourselves, then we can bear true life. And that's why I invite both of you, but as well all of us here. This is a renewal as well for all of us. I invite all of us to look at the crucifix, our Lord there, dying for us. Because that's what you are called to do for each other. To die to yourselves so that you can give life to others. St. John Paul II reminds us of the law of gift. My being increases in as much as you give it away. As long as you lose yourself, you'll be greater. And this day and every day, it's an opportunity to exercise this task where your love is renewed. And the vows that you're about to say to each other, the I do, needs to be renewed every day to grow in freshness. So Riley and Natalie, it is a joy to see you here. Finally, the day is here. So build your marriage on solid ground, on solid rock, which is his love, Christ's love. Remain in him, just as he reminded us very well in the gospel that you chose for your wedding. Remain in him, remain in his love. You know well that to remain in his love means to live the will of God in the present moment, in the here and now. How is our Lord calling me to love? How is he calling me to think about others, to speak right now? How can I give him glory serving and loving my husband, my wife? This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. That's it, it's very simple. We have the formula to become saints there. So with that, I just wanna assure you of my prayers and of all of our prayers on this special day, you will soon become husband and wife. So may our Lord guide the steps of your journey together towards heaven, our final destination, with the light of his word that we just read, but as well of the sacrament, especially the Eucharist. And may our Blessed Mother be there always, be there always near you to comfort you in union with St. Joseph. Amen.
I hear good. Dearly beloved, you have, to, you have come together into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all their responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Riley and Natalie, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. Hi, Natalie. Thank you, Riley, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to bless the rings. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. With confidence in the Lord, let us present our prayers and petitions before him. For the Pope, all the bishops and clergy, that they may lead us to deeper faith in God 
and a stronger love for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Riley and Natalie, newly joined in holy matrimony, for their health and well-being as a family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family. For the family, relatives, and friends of Natalie and Riley, who have been there to support them through the years, bless them with love and peace, and grant them the happiness that they seek. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place all these petitions, all the intentions that we have in, in our hearts and lift them up to you. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peaceful dawn, Jesus. 
twist and turn all women to blessed with peaceful spirits blessed with joy Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, the rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church, through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Charles and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Riley and Natalie, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection, they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, 
scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Right now, I'll invite Natalie and Riley to kneel down again. They are going to receive the nuptial blessing, which we ask our Lord, our Heavenly Father, to really pour down His Holy Spirit upon them as they begin their marriage life. So I invite you to really pray with me this prayer so that our Lord can grant them the desires of their hearts. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on this his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helmet to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant, you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on this, your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Natalie, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband, Riley, entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal, and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and, to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, May they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. 
and grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. For the reception of Holy Communion, if you are not Catholic, not baptized Catholic, you are welcome also to come but to receive a blessing. In order to do that, just come with your arms crossed like this, so that's the signal for the priest to give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so, that, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have an announcement on behalf of the um, newlywed couple. There will be a send-off of the couple in the back of the church for those who would like to participate. Grab some bubbles from the back of the church. I would just ask that the, the extended families and wedding party be here after the sending off for photos. Thank you. And before we send off the couple, we're going to give them a very special blessing. So maybe you come to the front. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm happy to be the first one to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Riley Connors.